Hello everyone. Well, I've decided to create a video um, from a male's perspective on doll collecting. Now, in this vid I've got a lot to say about all sorts of different subjects and I'm not sure which direction I'm going to go in, so just bear with me. At the end of the vid, I'm going to introduce you to a very, very special, rare doll um, that is spirited. And there's a bit of a storyline behind it as well. I've been working with the doll personally myself, as Beth has, um, for quite a few days now. And we've got a, quite an interesting story out of that one. So I'll introduce you to that doll at the end of the video. Um, but I wanted to sort of do a vid on a male's perspective on dolls. Now I'm talking about dolls in general therapy dolls and spiritual dolls now this is little cam so i'm just going to introduce you to cam say hi cam hey now he's the culprit for beth's doll collection she's amassed over 300 dolls now every doll is e has either got residual energy or it is spirited and there is a spirited connection to it now, I want to point out that um, contrary to some people's opinion, a spirit is not inside the doll, it is connected to the doll. It's like a bungee cord type of thing. It's like when, um, if you believe in astral travel, your spirit leaves the body when you sleep. Um, it's like there's this spiritual umbilical cord that is attached to something um to your body and it, your spirit can come and go and that's exactly what happens with a spirited doll the connection is to the doll but the spirit is outside the doll so it can come and go as it pleases it's not there all the time it can roam about go wherever it wishes um now i'm just trying to work out what direction i'm Okay, what, what I think I'll first tell you a little bit about ourselves, which is something that we don't normally do. Um, Beth has a large doll collection, and like I said before, most of it is spirited or it has some very interesting residual energy. Those are the types of dolls that she's attracted to. Now, she has been given quite a lot of dolls that don't have any sort of spirit connection or any residual energy now what she actually does on the sideline is she restores dolls so um, people sent her dolls and she will restore dolls for them she also runs classes on re on um, restoring dolls so some of those dolls that do not have spirited or residual energy she uses in her classes to show people show groups how to restore dolls so that's one thing she actually does now the spirited dolls um, she actually runs morning teas for people who um, who have some sort of a, a, a loss issue like uh, you know they may have lost a child or something like that and the dolls are used in a therapy sort of class which she actually runs herself now Beth her background is in childcare and old age. Um, she runs spiritual development classes as I have in the past and I still occasionally do. We both um, worldwide we do a lot of spiritual and paranormal advising as we run a paranormal team. We have run paranormal tours um, and um, you know we're very adept in what we know uh, I've been doing a lot of the paranormal stuff for 45 odd years so there's a, a lot that I've learned over the years as well in all sorts of different areas um, I work in a healthcare sector on Cert 4 and disability services so I've worked in disability services as well and um, you know it's the dolls are an interesting thing it's 
you know, 30, 40 years ago, I remember you hear a little bit about doll collecting, and it was mostly about antique dolls and collectible dolls and all that. And particularly in the 70s and 80s, you get the Franklin Mints and um, you get the Copper Arts and, you know, the, the certain home arts that were developing dolls for collector's items and all that sort of stuff. But you never really heard too much about spirited dolls. Although the funny thing is, um, when I started my spiritual and paranormal journey 45 years ago, um, I was very, um, I understood very quickly that items like jewellery, pianos, furniture, houses can have a residual energy. They also can have a spirit attachment because of the residual energy. Um, it's for instance like if, an old, if a, a lady who had passed away had an affinity to a particular item or a doll loved it so much and they had either not been able to cross over or they had decided they wanted to stay where they were whether it be the house that they loved or around the piano they loved or around the jewellery they loved or around a doll they loved they formed that sort of like a connection to that particular item and as a, a spiritual person way back 45 years ago I was reading the energy off of the items whether it be a piano or a doll or a piece of jewellery or whatever and I could work with the energy and do a reading on the person that owned the particular item and occasionally I come across the spirit themselves um, because they were still connected to that particular item and that's a similar thing that happens now these days with the dolls now spirited dolls are a massive thing worldwide um, there is so much of it about there are so many pages about just on, on spirit of dolls on Facebook um, now it's you know it is a big big thing you know collecting dolls collecting spirited dolls the sad thing is though that people don't actually understand a lot about spirit that are connected to the doll they, they look at it as like a an item to possess and you don't actually possess that spirit there's um, there's so many times when we've actually been contacted and and been asked I want to create a doll um, to connect to bind my grandmother to it because I miss my grandmother well <laughs> It's very spiritually unethical to try and bind a spirit to anything. Now I can tell you that you can bind a spirit if it's been unruly and whatever. We've done this several times before. Beth and I both work with unruly spirit as well as lovely spirit. Um, Beth and I have both dealt with negative spirit as we've dealt with demonic spirit as well personally myself over the 45 years I've dealt with a lot of demonic energies got rid of a lot of demonic energies I've actually done quite a few exorcisms as well in the last 45 years so we both have a lot of knowledge in the good and bad side Beth calls herself a grey witch um, so she's got that side to her and she says because basically um, she calls herself a grey wish because because of the fact that it's with the spiritual and paranormal you have to know both the good and the bad side you have to understand it to be able to work in the spiritual and the paranormal areas you have to know the good and the bad side there is no just working with the good side and there's no just working with the bad side 
um, we do things in a very very positive way we always have we don't entertain anything negative our house is very very protected and with what we do we always protect ourselves and we always protect the groups that we take out with us now um, when it comes to to dolls as I was saying before doll collecting is is really in a big massive resurgence and it's antique dolls it's collectible dolls um, spirited dolls that's a massive thing worldwide it's a very very real thing um, the question I suppose a lot of people have is why would a spirit attached to a doll well I could put it in a general form that say for instance an elderly lady um, has had a couple of dolls maybe one in particular that she's been um, really uh, affiliated to and she's loved so much she hasn't crossed over for some reason and that her residual energy on that doll also helps to attract her energy to it so she stays around the doll or wherever the doll is so that's how you can have a, a spiritual attachment to the doll that's just one for instance um, the other thing I want to say too is like I was wandering around Kmart the other day and um, it really blew my mind I was walking past a shelf and there was some dolls on there and whatever company it was was creating down syndrome look-alike dolls and I thought that was just absolutely fantastic because people are starting to create alternative dolls and um, you know it's it's just an amazing thing it's there are so many artists out like this little fella here is a reborn doll he was created now I'm just gonna pull his head up a little bit he's a little old fella he's got a spirit attachment but this guy was created by an artist um, who realized that nothing is perfect and quite often you get children who are born unperfect now this little fella is it's like he's got one of those little old age disease type of things you know that you hear about and um, and I think that's just fantastic and it's just such a, a lovely energy this guy I have a bit of an affinity to him there's a few dolls that I do have a bit of an affinity to now Beth is is more or less we're both spirit communicators we're both mediums okay so when you go through our channel and you see us do some paranormal investigating whether it be cemeteries or buildings or whatever a lot of what you see is you'll see us using technical gear like cat balls and proximity pods k2s um, light meters and light sensors and whatever else and we do that more for the public but quite often while we're doing those investigations we'll turn the camera off and we will communicate directly to the spirit or to spirits that are around that area and we do that quite often off the cap off the camera um, basically because for the viewers out there for the general public they like to see something happening and they can't actually see the spirit that we are communicating with so we'll turn the cameras off and we'll have a bit of a chat to the spirit and uh, you know quite often we'll have we'll do a little bit of a counseling session or we'll find out what their story is you know it's like we do a lot of that sort of stuff on the side because we do communicate to spirit that is what we do um, we also run uh, spiritual development classes as I was saying um, and uh, you know we do a host of different things <clears throat> now when it comes to therapy dolls um, if you go back 
you know, in your memory, perhaps, you know, if you're a female, you may have been given a doll when you were a child. Um, as a mother, you may have given a doll to your child. And if you watch a child, they kind of like nurture the, the doll. They look after the doll. They may try to feed the doll. They may try to change the doll's nappy. It's kind of like they take on the motherly type of empathic instinct in looking after the doll. A lot of people I've seen um, will take their child shopping and they'll take a doll, the child's doll with them. And the, it's a bit of a distraction therapy for the child to look after the doll so that the child doesn't buck up in a supermarket. Um, in nursing homes we find that dolls are used in doll therapy, especially for the elderly, the people who have dementia, um, the people who are um, palliative care, you know. A lot of people um, will give those types of people who are going through those issue, issues um, a doll and it's kind of like it's a bit of a, a distraction therapy it gives them comfort you know it makes them feel that they have something to hold on to that something is with them so there's a little bit of a, a distraction therapy there people a big thing worldwide these days is people who have PTSD um, who have loss issues like ch uh, child loss issues you know um, they go into the doll therapy thing and that's where the reborns come in you know they're a fantastic thing for people who have lost a child it gives them a bit of a sense of comfort it gives them a sense of calm, it calms their anxieties, it calms their fears and there are people out there worldwide who are now taking their dolls out shopping with them or out wherever they go um, and uh, of course you're going to get the general public that are going to, you know, looking at them sideways and thinking what the hell, there's something wrong with this person and yes the truth is there is something wrong with that person they are feeling lost they are feeling anxiety they are feeling um, all sorts of different things and a doll is very much like an assistance dog <laughs> as if you watch through our videos Beth had an assistance dog who sadly passed away with cancer and uh, that assistance dog was uh, an epilepsy assistance dog for Beth but there are assistance dogs for the blind there are assistance dogs these days for PTSD and all that sort of stuff and it's a similar sort of thing it's a security thing you know there are people who need that sort of security thing or just to help them through life make them feel a little bit of comfort and whatever else and there are people out there walking around the streets with dolls and it's a very very starting to become a very very common thing these days um, Beth herself is uh, she takes out some of her dolls sometimes we take them out on investigations and sometimes we'll take them out into shopping centers and things like that and we don't really care what people think and she feels comforted and it eases her anxieties and PTSD and whatever else and it works for her and it works for hundreds maybe thousands of people who are actually doing the same thing it's a very common thing now Beth's actually got, um, she's working through her degree in counseling services at the moment um, and she does run classes from home with the spirit of dolls and what we've found is that there is quite a few people who have lost a child and they're suffering from that grief and Beth has the ability to uh, she's got that empathic side to her where she's realized that dolls can actually help with 
the grief issues and stuff like that. And um, so she runs classes from home as well. And we have a bunch of women that come here and they all pick one of the dolls that they're attracted to. And God knows there's 300 of them here. We need a big house. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, it's to see the look on their face, to see how they react with the doll and feel of comfort and their anxieties and their fears and um, you know their depression just slowly fades away while they're having a morning tea with the dolls and it's just an amazing amazing thing now um, I do want to point out that again that the spirited dolls that we have they are not inside the doll they are outside the doll they are attached like I was talking before it's like we have that astral when we go out our spirit goes out on the astral we have this spiritual core the spirit is attached to the doll with a similar astral type of it's a residual energy thing um, so they are outside the doll now we've actually um, did a an expo which blew a lot of people's minds uh, that and that, and people could not understand how the hell this was working but we actually did tarot card readings with spirits of dolls and it was just an amazing amazing thing and people but people just could not understand how a spirit was helping to do that was connected to a doll was doing a reading for a person <laughs> but it's a very very real thing it's like we communicate to that spirit we communi communicate to spirit that's attached to a doll or a piano or a piece of furniture or a bit of jewelry or a house or out in the open if we're in a mining area or historic area if, it, area if there's a spirit there we're communicating to it there's no big difference at all so i'm going to put cam down for a moment and i'm going to tell you a little bit about this very special spirited doll we're going to introduce to you in a sec now the thing is there are some very very creative people out there particularly ones artists who are making the reborn dolls um, oh there's some fantastic artwork out there I mean we, we've got a reborn doll that is um, that uh, we call wolf is a is a zombie doll he's been created in a zombie form so we've got another one that's created in a monkey form he's a reborn doll um, so there's some really really intriguing artists out there who are creating reborn dolls the artists that are making the molds um, quite often just create the molds and they actually um, supply the molds or sell the molds to other artists who create the doll okay so they do the painting of the doll they put the doll together um, they make any changes to the doll all that sort of stuff and there's some fantastic artists out there who are working in that way creating dolls reborn dolls all sorts of different dolls I'm going to tell you a little story about this special doll that I'm going to introduce to you now very very alternative now we've been working with the spirit because we are spirit communicators we've been working with the spirit of the doll um, the story goes back to a place called a country called Liechtenstein it goes back to World War II now the story is that there was this couple who had a child 
during World War II. Um, first, off, first off, I'll go to, I'll just quickly say that Liechtenstein itself during World War II was a neutral country. Um, of course, very close to Switzerland, um, Germany, Austria, and sort of smack bang in the middle. It's a very, very tiny country. It was a neutral country. Germanic speaking, um, and uh, there, it was a neutral country, but there were um, elements or people in, in Liechtenstein who were very sympathetic to the German cause. So there was a, a kind of like a, a national German party in Liechtenstein and of course Liechtenstein was used there was German banking and there was all sorts of different stuff there so Germany didn't end up invading Liechtenstein because basically they had a little bit of power there anyway so you know what was the point and the place was so small it was basically uh, the population in Liechtenstein itself was like 30,000 odd people so it wasn't huge at all so it was not worth invading um, there was, however, a uh, National German Party there and the leader of it was an SS officer. <clears throat> um, now, this couple that had a child, um, the child had a very rare deformity. And um, Germans being Germans, um, they were very interested in anything that was different and the story of this particular child was this child was taken from the couple and a lot of experiments were done on this child. Now after the experiments were done they disposed of the child. Now the spirit of the child remained earthbound. It remained, um, from what we can gather, it remained close to the couple. There was, a, of course, a lot of grief and a lot of um, a lot of anxiety and a, a lot of different things that you know a couple would um, feel having a child taken away from them. Um, now I'm not sure how long the couple actually lived for but the spirit of the child stayed with the couple. Now from what we're gathering through spirit communication with the child um, the couple did have another sibling or two or whatever I'm not too sure but some Somewhere along the track, when the couple died, the child there would form some sort of an attachment to one of the siblings or something that belonged to the sibling. Somewhere along the track, that sibling came to Australia. Now, we're not too sure what happened to that sibling. But somewhere along the track again, um, the spirit connected to a, an artist who was creating dolls. And for some reason, don't ask me why, I have no, no idea why, but this is the story that we've been getting. For some reason connected to an artist that was creating dolls and the artist decided for some reason they were going to make something completely alternative completely different in the vein that nothing is perfect and that there are ch children who are born with deformities so the spirit connected to this the mind or the person who was creating these dolls and um, 
hence almost gave the idea of of creating the mold for this particular doll now once the mold was created um, the mold was bought by an artist who had for some reason just was was so prompted to to buy this mold because it was so alternative and she wanted to finish off the product of this doll and it's just an amazing an amazing artistic um, finished product of a doll now this spirit for some reason connected to this doll and so we're going back from World War II all the way up to now that the spirit is is still around and is still connected to and is now connected to a doll. Um, now this doll is a very very alternative doll and. Um, I've never seen the likes of it. Never seen the likes of, of this doll before. Never felt the energy. The, never felt anything like it. You know, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. So, I'm going to introduce you to this doll. And Beth will tell you a little bit more about it. I'd like to introduce you to young Annika. Very alternative and a big reminder that nothing is perfect in this world. So Annika is a alternative reborn doll and uh, very much um, showing that nothing is perfect in this world and we think the artists are very very creative and very open spiritually to have created something like this um, so Beth's just going to quickly tell us how she came about this doll or what attracted her to it I um I saw Annika well for a start there's two spirits it's complicated so we have Annika's represents a type of conjoined twin and I'm a dyslexic white Australian chick and I cannot pronounce the name of it to save my life because it's in Greek or Latin or something but basically it means that when the baby is in the womb and they're going to develop as twins they replicate everything replicates so everything's identical so it's the start of an identical twin and the type of condition that Annika represents is when the face replicates. So she doesn't have two heads as such, she has two faces. So for me, there's two spirits, there's two separate. It's like there's, if you sit the concept of a split soul. So you have one soul that splits into two pieces to go and do whatever you have to do and they live two different lives and then that soul comes back together again when both the souls are a spirit side so it becomes a whole soul it's like two sides of the same coin with Annika those two sides of the same coin spiritually is in the one body so it's like yin and yang light and dark I tell people Rick is this if you get technical it's what kind of twin flame type connections are so I tell people that Rick is my twin flame he's order on chaos he's very logical he's very down to earth he's very practical and I'm all over the place so I'm not down to earth Rick can, as a medium can switch off I don't Rick as a medium can choose when he wants to use his abilities. I can't. I'm very, I'm a very strong empath. Rick has control over his empathic side. Whereas I feel everything, see everything and can't escape it. 
So Annika is that two sides of that same coin, but it's in the one body. So I've had to do research on how this how this happens and what it represents and how um, common it is, and it's not very common. How did you come across Annika? I saw Annika on eBay. Um, the the seller, the artist was selling her on eBay, and there was no. And my head was going, well, um, I can't afford that. I have a budget for my dollies, and I tend to stick to that within that budget. And Annika was quite out of my bu my budget, so I put her on my wish list, and I kind of watched it for a while, and then. I took it off my wish list. Alternative dolls, reborn dolls and spirited dolls have become an absolute huge thing worldwide. Yeah. yeah. And there are so many um, different sites um, yeah. where you can actually, you know, get involved in that sort of thing. Yeah. And it's a very, very real thing. So I took her off my eBay list and two days later she I'm in a lot of reborn groups where you can buy reborns from different artists and you can buy them secondhand and off previous owners and stuff. So I'm in one of my reborn groups which I hadn't really tuned into for a while. Um, Annika popped up on my group, on my page, on my Facebook page and it had the name of the seller. And so I kind of watched it for a while and I watched how a lot of people gave the artist a whole lot of grief and jumped to conclusions and labelled the doll creepy and disgusting and unsettling. And there was, there was a few positive um, comments one lady said she was a work of art, another lady said she was beautiful, but there was more negative comments than positive comments. The thing is, it's it's a reality in, in life. You know, we know that kids are born with deformity, people that do have deformities, and some are very, very extreme. And it's a very, very real life-like thing. So, I could feel the spirit and I kind of watched it on eBay for a while and then one night I got up and there was a young woman in spirit sitting in the lounge room and I could not understand a word she said. She was panicking, she was anxious, she was scared, she was frightened, but I could not understand a word she was saying. Um, which is unusual because my guides usually translate if someone if I'm talking to a spirit that speaks English and I'm talking to a spirit that speaks Japanese I always hear it in English and I could not understand This woman I couldn't work out what language she was speaking. I couldn't work out where she was from I couldn't work out what she wanted and This was all over the East break and then the only word I could hear in English was hide the baby and that was all I could hear and it was like she was yelling down an old one of the old rotary phones where you have the dial on it one of the old dial phones and she was yelling hide the baby hide the baby you have to hide the baby hide the baby and then her a young gentleman rocked up a couple of days after she did and he was well dressed and he was dressed in an overcoat and a suit and he had you know, a, a business case with him. And um, he was talking to her and I couldn't understand a word they were saying. But all I could understand was hide the baby. You have to hide the baby. And I'm like, I'm not even sure which baby you're talking about love because I can't figure out the rest. And then I worked out that it was to do with this doll that I'd been kind of fascinated with on online. And I sent the artist a message on Facebook and I asked her if she did payment plans. And because it was over the Easter break and because people have lives and kids and families and that, 
took a while for her to get back to me, but she said, yeah, she does payment plans and the doll's still available. And, you know, she gave me the details of the, how the payment plans worked. And I'm like, all right then, but I didn't have any money. And it just so happened that some money entered my account two days after I contacted the seller. And so I was able to put down a deposit, a fairly hefty deposit, and then I was able to pay her off. And in the course of, it was over probably three weeks, was it? Three, three weeks? This woman who I eventually worked out was the um, baby's mother and the young gentleman I was seeing was the baby's father. I couldn't understand a word either of them saying, but I could. I started having nightmares. I started having not real nice dreams and I started having unsettling visions and Annika, well, there's two. There's Annika, which is the one with the eyes open, and there's Anna, which is the one with the eyes closed. So we tend to, she, we tend to, Annika's more responsive. So Annika and her sister ended up here. But the reason her mother was so frightened and desperate and wanting me to take the baby and she drove me nuts for three weeks she would turn up and I'd have to find things for her to do I had to literally get ready to bring a baby home so I had to make sure I had clothing I had to make sure I had blankets and and you know a pram and a place to put her and her mother and that kept her mother busy so I would put things in the pram and the mother would stand there in spirit and I'd find things moved around I'd find I didn't where I left one thing I'd get up in the morning and it'd be somewhere else she drove me mental because I couldn't understand what she was saying and then I actually stepped in and um, uh, I found out over the course of time that uh, this all happened in a place called Liechtenstein and the language was a dialect of the German language I thought she was Dutch. I honest, I the only thing I could come could even put close to what I was hearing was Dutch, because Rick's Dutch and his his grandmother drops in and she she intermittently talks speaks in Dutch when my translator doesn't work properly because she's probably swearing and that's why I can't hear her. So I thought she was Dutch. So then I started looking up traditional Dutch names for you know girls' names. And that's where I came up with Annika because Annika means angelic, it means grace, it means beautiful. And it's also a Dutch version of Anna. So translated, it's Anna and Anna. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, the, the political party, the head of the political party in, in Liechtenstein at the time of World War II, he was a German SS officer. Oh, don't get me started and, uh, and of course you know there was a lot of a lot of medical experimentation and all that sort of stuff um, from German medical fraternity He's standing at the window. and they were very very interested in in Annika because of they're interested the in twins interestingness yeah. and um, He's standing what had actually happened was that uh, Annika was uh, found and and picked up by be careful how you talk because she will yeah go off a trolley was found and picked up and taken away yeah we'll leave it at that and we'll leave it at that um yeah we won't go into it any any more right. details i've explained a little bit earlier on so yeah i've had nightmares i've had lots of nightmares but the thing is um you know with the alternative uh dolls and spirit that are connected to it um, as I was trying to explain before, spirit is still connected to dolls for certain reasons. And why do you think that the doll, the spirit is still connected to this doll? Because it looks like her. Because it looks like her. It's the same as Wolf. Wolf's one of my other alternatives. Popped over behind there. Yep. He 
connected to that doll because it looks like him. People, and I've said this before, people find dolls unnerving because they look like us. But what they find even more unnerving is when you get a doll that, that shows the imperfection of, you, of how a human can be. Annika shows that we are not perfect. Annika shows that not every baby is born perfect and pristine and beautiful and and you know every mother when you have a baby when a mother sees her baby for the first time she thinks it's the most beautiful child on the planet and Annika's parents thought she was the most beautiful child they've ever seen because she was theirs when my daughter was born I honestly thought she was beautiful she was stunning and if you ask me she was but not everybody sees beauty the way beauty is in the eye of the beholder beauty is subjective and you get you can get you get people who were born with hair lips and cleft palates and club foots and you know club feet and you get them that have um birthmarks on their faces and my daughter was born with a strawberry birthmark on her head and it raised about it was raised up off the top of her head about two and a half centimeters and people would see the birthmark on top of her head before a hair grew before they would see her and they would say oh what's that and I'm like what's a birthmark so I used to just put hats on her because it was such a minor thing that people would see as an imperfection mind you Carla was also born with hair on her head that stood straight up until she was eight months old but The dolls show the imperfections that we choose. We choose, sorry, she's leaning forward. The dolls show the imperfections that in life people choose to ignore. Um, you know, there are dolls that are, um, they now make dolls that look like people with Down syndrome. And they're in Kmart. You know, they... They make dolls of different nationalities and different skin colours and that's great, that's awesome. But in kids who are, who are, who do have some kind of interestingness, they don't have anything that looks like them. There's a lady on Facebook and she makes, she makes reborn dolls, but she makes them for kids who are suffering from cancer and she makes them with the port in their chest the same as the kid she makes them with the feeding tubes down their noses you know up their nose and down in, you know she makes them with the oxygen tube she makes them you know she makes them to look like the child there's a lady who makes dolls for children with hearing issues and she makes dolls that have cochlear implants stuck to the side of their heads because it looks like it looks like the child. Um, it's the same with the Down syndrome. Yeah, it's the same as the Down syndrome ones. Um, Amber, behind me, she's got a spirit connected to her that has Down syndrome. And she's not a doll that they made to look like she had Down syndrome. But because of the spirit attached to her, it's more prominent for her. She's lovely. She's beautiful. She's all love. I know there are going to be this particular doll reborn dolls are made as kits so someone makes a mold and make reproduces that face those hands those feet and then an artist paints it up and puts the doll together now I've seen since I've since I was trying to pay off Annika I've seen three others of this kit that's popped up on Facebook it's a new kit, it's a, it's a limited edition, it's made in small quantities. It's highly sought after by certain artists. But I didn't get the same connection with those that I got with her. And that's because this one's spirited. And the artist, I'll take a hat off, the artist has done an absolutely fantastic job at painting up this kit with respect 
So she's got little painted hair on her head. It's very light. She's got all of the little blemishes and all of the um, veins in her head. As you can see, you can see the two. Sorry, sweetie. You can see the two faces, the two foreheads. You know, and she's got the most beautiful little ears. She takes a dummy. So this is her dummy. These dummies are made with magnets because there's a magnet, the artist puts a magnet inside the doll's mouth in order for the magnet to stick. So she takes a dummy. She's got beautiful grey blue eyes. And out of respect to her, the lady put a little beanie, a little, a little hat in. Because A to keep her head warm which it does but it's also to not give people the opportunity to stare because I've lived with disability all my life I've lived with epilepsy I have I'm severely dyslexic I walk with a stick at the moment I had cruiser for 11 years people fear what they don't understand and difference is something that many people don't understand. You had an interesting experience at a um, physio the other day. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's lucky I didn't punch her. <laughs> well, what I said earlier on in the video was that there are a lot of people who are actually taking their dolls out in the, into public because yeah. of their anxiety, their yeah. PTSD. It's a therapy thing. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people just don't understand that. No, I've and um I've taken this incident. I've taken explain. um I was going to the local um rehab for well, I started going for hydrotherapy. So the first incident was I took Amber with me. And Amber's sitting behind me. And it was during COVID and we had to have, you know, you walk into a you walk into anywhere, you know, coughs, colds, they do that the whole thing and then they ask you, you know, have you signed in and then yeah, and then they get the thermometer to check your temperature and the lady checked mine and she checked Rick's and I wasn't really paying attention and she turns around and she said oh she said that's weird I said what's wrong she said I haven't got I can't get a temperature for your baby she was trying to take Amber's temperature she was a doll <laughs> and I said to her well actually she's a doll and if you did get a temperature I'd be worried um and I walked through she laughed and she, you know we had a chat and she understood. Yeah. She did. She understood about the therapy dolls yeah. and all that. And she was absolutely fascinated. Yeah. So that was a really yeah. good positive interaction with somebody. And then um, we walked down to the pool because I was doing hydrotherapy and I sat Amber down on the on the um, the chair while I got, got you know, got organised to get into the pool. And this lady comes hur hurrying from the office and she walks up to me. She says, are you here to see such and such? And I said, yes. And she goes... And she looks at Amber, who's sitting on the chair, and I'm like, don't worry, the baby's not real, she's a doll. She said, oh, that's a relief. She said, I thought you were going to leave her unattended near the pool. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so Amber sat on the chair while I did my session, and then she walked, we walked home, we went home. And then the next time I went, I was having a really, 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 really bad day. Really bad day. And I took one of my other therapy dolls. It's actually a big, fluffy teddy bear. And her name's Gertrude, and she is spirited. You went to see a physio. And I went to see a physio. It was it was a um not in the pool. It was a normal physio appointment. And I'm sitting there, and we decided just as a joke to put a mask on the on the bear. So the bear had a mask because it was COVID. And I walked in, and the bear's got little sandals on, and she's got a little dress on. And um. There was an old couple sitting next to me and he turns to me and he says, oh, the bear's got the right idea. I said, well, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. And her and her, him and her, his wife cracked up. His wife was there because she had a hip replacement. Anyway, I got called in and I walked down with Gertrude and I sat, the woman looked at me and she looked me up and down. I'm like, oh, here we go. And she sat me down and she was, she, I'm not going to, she had the bedside manner of a cardboard box. Um, she had sized me up pretty much as soon as I walked into her office. And I said to my, my 
psychologist that I see, I said to my psychologist, the only difference between me walking into that office with my bear and me walking into that office with Cruiser, my assistance dog, is people would look at the assistance dog and go, yes, she has a disability. This woman looked at the bear and thought I was a nutter. She had no understanding that both the assistance dog and the bear were doing the same job. She had no idea that no. that dolls can be a therapy. Yeah, can be a. Um... It's the reason the dolls work is because they're weighted, and it goes with that pressure thing. Some people feel safe when they've got a bit of weight on their chest. You feel you feel snuggy. You feel, it's like using a weighted blanket which a lot of people have these days because you have aches and pains and whatever. It's the same thing. So the dolls are all weighted. Even the bear that I had was weighted. Um, they, you buy weighted toys for kids with autism and, um, you know, anxiety disorders and you have lap blankets for, it's the same principle. They're weighted. They give you that sense of safety. They give you that sense of calm and they calm your central nervous system. They also give you something to cuddle. And when we're little kids, you know, we all have that favourite toy. We always have a teddy or a, I had a dog. He's actually still in the be in the bedroom. He's sitting on a chair in the bedroom. And you get a sense of calm and a sense of security out of cuddling something. So there's something to hold, something to cuddle, something to calm. But they're also something that, for me, it's, I don't, it's a it puts that it's something to break the ice if someone walks up to me because I've got people around Ballarat that know that have met me with my dolls and the first thing they say to me oh, is who who have you got today because I know I have a few or they say oh you haven't got your dolls with you today are you okay are you having is 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 today a good day and my dolls are all weighted for different weights some days I can't carry Amber because she's too heavy. But then I can take, you know, Wolf with me. Or I can take Dee Dee with me. So or I take Cam, except Cam really doesn't like being social. He's a grumpy old man now. But um, it's that added, yes, I have some something that I, I don't deal well some days but neither does anyone else. No, I don't give a crap what people think anymore. I used to, I used to be very paranoid about it. But after I lost Cruiser, I used to take BB everywhere with me. And she's the one I take when I can't hold the weighted dolls. And she comes on all the paranormal investigations and she's all over the channel and she, you know, we have a bit of fun with the dolls when we take them out on investigations because, you know, we don't take ourselves particularly. We take it serious, but we just don't take ourselves seriously. Um, it's about doing what works for you. I don't care anymore what people think when I take my dolls out. I've had some really nice interactions with people, and I've had some really not so nice interactions with people because of the dolls. I had a lady, I was waiting for a friend and I had Amber with me and I was just sitting in the front seat and Amber was sitting on my lap leaning up against the dashboard and she was looking at me and this lady came out and she goes, oh that's beautiful and I informed her that it was a doll and her and her husband were getting into the car and I explained to them that I had PTSD and um, she helps me, you know, just deal with people. And they thought it was fantastic and they held her and they, you know, asked me the questions and I answered it and it was fine. And then I was in the shopping centre oh, a few a few weeks later, a couple of months later maybe, and I had Amber with me again. <coughs> and this woman walks up to me and she goes, aren't you a little old to be playing with dolls? Just random stranger, not minding her business. And I said to her, aren't you too, be old, too old to be so judgmental? And she looked at me and I said, 
She is a therapy doll. I have PTSD. And she helps me deal with people like you. And the woman looked at me. And she said nothing. And she's standing there completely dumbfounded at my answer. And I said, my grandmother always said to me, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. I said, so me and my doll are going to walk away. So it's a big thing worldwide, therapy dolls. It is. Massive. In it nursing is. homes, for the elderly, for disabled, for people who have even mild um, disorders, and disabilities. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a massive thing. They and, use, a, they know, use weighted it. toys with kids with autism. I've got a weighted koala in the bedroom. Um, they sell them to calm. My daughter has a weighted koala because she's got ADHD. Um, she also comes and grabs Amber and takes her in with her. And the amazing thing too is that like here, we have so many that are spirited because yeah. we only collect residual uh, energy and spirited. Most of them have an attachment. Yeah, spirited uh, Most of the dolls. And most they are them. spirited for a reason. Now we're not going to go into the reasons why. Eventually they all do cross over. In they all come time. back. <laughs> Sometimes they are here um, to help others, you know, to help people who've still got a mission in life, even though they've passed on, their spirit has stayed with the doll. And it's to help people with their anxiety, their, their grief, their disorder. As I was saying before, Beth um, runs a little group every now and then it's for... Once a um, month once a month for uh, it's a therapy doll. people who have lost children and it's... the spirited dolls are actually helping the people with their grief the, and that's why the they dolly, stay the dolly morning teas the doll therapy morning teas they run once a month my first one was last month I had a, a group of lovely ladies and they found it massively helpful um, it's not the ladies that were here had lost a child. Um, but it is not just for women who lose children. It's for people who have anxiety, depression. It, those, the stigma attached to mental illness is just horrendous. You know, I have been given that many labels over the years. I've got more labels than the bloody soup aisle at Woolworths. You know, that's how many... I've been given all sorts of labels. At the moment, they're putting it all down to PTSD, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but, you know, you have women who have lost children. Reborn dolls are really big in the lost community. The artist I bought Annika from, she makes dolls for people in the lost community who have lost children. She makes therapy dolls for, for people who need that doll to help them get through the day. She makes those dolls. Some artists make don't make them like that. Some artists, that's what they do. Some artists make them because you make it for the love of it. My doll, my doll therapy sessions are for people who need to try something different because what they're doing isn't working for them or they want something to add to it. And I'm I tell people I'm not trained. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a counsellor. I have life experience and I know what works for me and I know what has worked for other people around me. So I say to people come drink tea, cuddle a dolly, have some scones, talk to people. If it works for you great, if you get something out of that, that is awesome and if you don't then you've had a nice afternoon with some lovely people to talk to. And you don't have to come back each like I've got a few that have come back from last from the last one I did. But it's about offering people something different. Because sometimes the mainstream doesn't work for everybody. I do let people know that if they are feeling like they are going to um, if they are feeling really bad, then to contact their GP and you know get that professional help this is an add-on this is an extra it's not the be-all and end-all it's an extra 
but if it's something that helps if, yeah. if a doll um, or spirit of doll can help a person yeah. with their issue then why issues, not then why not yeah I've got um, the dolls that I use in the therapy afternoon teas they're all spirited and they are what they get out of it is healing energetic healing is a two-way street so you've got people who do Reiki you've got people who do bone therapy you've got people who do the head tapping you've got people who do angel healing or crystal healing or whatever healing you do it's a two-way street and the spirit that's connected to the doll has the intent yeah. of healing yeah and helping and see they have that in the person who is holding the doll needs something they might just need to have something to cuddle they might just need something that doesn't judge them the dolls don't judge you if you walk in here and your hair's a mess and you know you have you've only just managed the best thing you've done that morning is to get in the car and come here and just breathe the dolls don't care they will still sit on your lap and you can still cuddle them and you can still tell them your problems and you can still have that interaction and that's what the people who come here for the doll therapy sessions get what the spirit gets in return is that unconditional love and understanding well we hope you've enjoyed the video and uh hope that brings a little bit more understanding about spirited dolls and uh in particular the alternative dolls and why and how dolls are such a big thing these days especially spirited ones and uh the uh the uh healing the uh, we call it therapy? <laughs> therapy dolls the therapy dolls mm. No, no, well, I, I probably need it for my memory, don't I? <laughs> a little bit of therapy. Um, but anyway, hope you've enjoyed the vid, and uh, we'll see you again soon. And for all of those people, if you happen to see anyone being. Uh, if you see someone with a doll. If you see someone with a doll. Be nice. Be nice, you know, really it's be basically nice. because, because gonna... they've got more of an awareness than what the people who are boo-booing them you know it's like it's <laughs> but it's more to the point if you see someone downtown with a doll yeah they're not having a good day they've already got some kind of issue that's right yeah. they're already they're trying to go about the day the best they can people who are using dolls as a therapy or they're working with spirited dolls basically have a higher awareness than those who are poo-pooing them yeah so there you go. All right. Hope you enjoy the vid. Check you later.